And the people in there are all, there are only about 35 of them. And they have to deal with 30, uh, 60 universities. And they all came from, essentially all came from uh, teachers training colleges. They have relatively little, if any, in understanding of what research universities really mean. So they are very nervous, and yet the society has placed such an enormous responsibility on them to say that you make sure that this university gets better. You make sure that that university gets better. Or not. If not, I'm going to replace you. So this is the reality that they face. So that's why they hang on to these numbers. Educators, on the other hand, as I said, also seem to forget that whenever a measurement comes out, there should be a company or error bars. Nobody talked about that. So we don't try to educate the Ministry of Education. That is our fault. So you put all this together, it becomes a very, very difficult dilemma, as you call it. But think of yourself again. I come back to this point. University of Malaya is the most prestigious university in this country, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. You have to shoulder this responsibility. You have no choice. Because if you don't, somebody else will shoulder this responsibility. So, in social science, in, 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 in humanities, it's always a difficult thing. Because, pe you know, sometimes people write books, which is not pi part of ISI, and so on and so forth. But I think that a great university, or potentially great university, such as University of Malaya, can find a way out of this dilemma for the nation, not only for your department, but for the nation, how to solve this problem. And I think you will, because you, the fact that you have so many people, I can't believe there are so many people wanting to hear my talk, uh, that you're still here after an hour and a half, <laughs> uh, that it must be something that you're very worried about. And once you have this worry, you must have this degree of uncomfortability. <laughs> and, and that's why I think you're going to do well. Clearly, somebody has to take charge here. All the questions you raised just now, I can't remember all of them, basically is a reflection of your uncomfortable about the situation. Find a solution here. Some of them is local. In Taiwan, for example, we force the National Science Council to say that, okay, find the right journal such that our people could publish in and they can be considered as good. I was just thinking, I mean, we're in this great building that I learned is from the Center for Islamic Studies. Islamic Studies is not a joke anymore. The world is looking at Islamic Studies. Why? Because the world does not understand, at least the, out, the world outside of the Islamic world does not understand Islamic culture. There is this huge gap between Islamic world and the rest of the world. This could be a university to bridge this gap. You're in a country, you're embedded in a country that is by definition multi-ethnic system. This is your strength, not your weakness. And you can do things that no one else could do. This is what's exciting about University of Malaya. And so there are lots and lots of opportunities. You know, the Chinese, Chinese call Weiji, which is crisis. It means dangerous opportunity. It's dangerous, but it's a tremendous opportunity for you and your colleagues to move forward. And I've read many of the writings of Chancellor Jasmine. By the way, I, I find it so interesting, his name. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't, you know, it's not a Muhammad, not a, not a Abdullah, not a bin something. So, uh, 
I have to ask him sometime to explain to me how he got his name. But, you know, work together to come up with solutions. And, and you're going to get there. Hi, Professor Sashin Feng. I'm Kuru Nathan, and it's always a pleasure to hear you talk, even after six years. Uh, you, you have heard my, me before? I've heard you before. <laughs> we hosted you before. <laughs> uh, five years ago, when I was preparing a reply to the minist Ministry of Higher Education, when University of Malaya fell 69 places, 80 places, I used one of your quotations that you did in the Shanghai Jiantong Conference, that ranking universities globally is a tremendous challenge, especially with such disparate economic pattern or seen or over. But looking at the rankings in 2005, I thought these rankings will go away, but they didn't. <laughs> and now from Shanghai Jiantong to QS, now we have QS, we have THE, and we have also the hybrid Newsweek rankings, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what is the general feeling among the academics in your university or in Taiwan whenever these rankings come out and the sense of restlessness that you fall 10 places, 20 places, would a, would a manager lose his job? Would you lose your job? <laughs> Recently, I was surprised to hear in a public uh, conference uh, a senior administrator from one of the ministries saying that the vice chancellors in Malaysia will lose your job if they fall in the age, in the, in the, not in the world rankings, but if they do not get research university status, for example. Do that sort of pressure is implied on a system that is uh, caught in between uh, 30 years of equality, and now we are trying to be first among equals. But I don't know, Professor Darshan, I, I, I tend to disagree with you that we are prestigious. <laughs> <laughs> because based, based on the subjective ranking, uh, subjective score of the QS ranking, our score for academic reputation has been falling uh, quite miserably in the last six, seven years now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I said that you're prestigious in Malaysia. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, let me say something about QS. Uh, there was a, it's really interesting here. There was a general agreement among the top 12 universities in Taiwan, what we call the Top University Alliance. These are the alliance, uh, these are the universities that all receive the so-called five-year 50 billion uh, new Taiwan dollar money. Our universities are part of that. We, they, the presidents have agreed, not in writing, but in words, that they will pay no attention to QS. And the reason was because QS is a for-profit company. Okay. However, having said that, when the QS came out, any university that showed that, 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 that looked good in that cranking made a big deal of it. <laughs> so, so again, it is a huge dilemma among higher education because we are pressured by the government. As you said, the VC might lose his job, but that, you know, that may not be so bad. He can then go sailing and have a good time in life <laughs> instead of dealing with... Um, we're, we're, we're pressured by the government where, where funding comes from. We're pressured by social uh, perceptions. Don't ever underestimate that. And we're pressured by the faculty who sometimes thinks that there are other ways of judging a university. These are all forces that come in different directions in a relatively short time. It's a very chaotic situation. It's a very confusing time. And it is very difficult for universities today. In fact, in the United States, uh, presidents almost never last more than five years. So it, it is a very, very difficult time.
But Asia is different from the rest of the world because it is economically robust. It is viewed as one of the new rising areas of the world. And its youth is going to be very important in the 21st century. The youth of Malaysia will have to lead the world. The youth of Taiwan will have to lead the world. The youth of China will have to lead the world in the 21st century. So the universities are important. But let's again ask the fundamental question. What is the source of all these confusions? Well, there are many, many issues buried in there which we can discuss at infinitum. One of them is that the higher education administrative structure is dysfunctional, at least in Taiwan. And I'll tell you why it is dysfunctional. Taiwan national universities are run by the Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Education, as I mentioned earlier, had only about 30 or 50, 35 people, all with teachers' training, uh, teachers training uh, 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 backgrounds, with no university administration backgrounds, and they are supposed to be the boss. Furthermore, in Taiwan, the accounting system and the human resource system also have different chan chan channels. So when you have such a system without an organization that lies between the university and the ministry, the interaction between the government and the university is one of, at best, awkwardness, at worst, chaos. And unless we solve this problem, which is the deep upstream problem, universities in Asia is going to have a great trouble. For example, so National University is going to be corporatized this year. And we actually went to visit them because I'm on the task force for autonomy and, and National Chengong University will be a one of the, it, it will be the first university to think of how to become autonomous in, in, uh, in Taiwan. So we went there to learn from them. And I talked to the president at that time, the former president, who was spending three years pushing this idea. And it was an arduous process. He had to deliver 70, lect 70 meetings within the university with colleges, with students, with staff, and so on and so forth. And I asked him, the, this, you know, so national university in Korea, the position that you have in the country is higher than National Taiwan University and National Chengkong University put together in Taiwan. Why are you worrying about changing it? And he said something that literally touched my heart. He said, because if I don't, I can only be best in Korea. I want to be best in the world. And that statement to me tells me that what Asian universities' challenges are. Without that sense that we belong to part of the world, we need to send students out to solve the world's problem, not just Malaysia's problem, not just Indonesia's problem, not just, not just Taiwan's problem, but the world's problem. Uh, then we're not doing our jobs. So American universities, I see, are beginning to ret ret retreat into their own little world. And I think that that's a mistake. And if they continue this, America, you will start seeing in the 21st century the slow degradation of American universities. So uh, this is a very hard question. I'm not sure I answered you, but I think that's the best I can do at the moment. Thank you, Professor, uh, Professor Feng Daswan, for his talk this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your presence to the talk this morning. On behalf of University of Malaya, we would like to thank you, Professor Feng Daswan, for his talk. Thank you and have a nice day.
we would like to invite Professor Dr. Dr. Kaos Jasmun, Professor Feng Daswan, and all top managements of the universities to have lunch to prepare for you. Thank you.